Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we are jumping into our electrical troubleshooting series. In particular, we are looking at the starter solenoid circuit on what we call the earlier bikes, the ones without the safety features on it. So let's dive in, show you the different bits and pieces, how the circuit's wired up and how we troubleshoot it. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the electric starter circuit, not just the actual starter itself, but all the other pieces and components that go towards triggering the electric starter to turn the engine over. A couple points I want to make about the electric starter circuit is one, it is an independent circuit from the ignition system. Some people think that they are tied together, that the spark, spark and spark plugs are not triggering, there's something wrong with the starter system. Not the case. All the starter system does is literally turn the engine over to attempt to start the engine from stop, much the same way the Kickstarter does the same thing. So uh, Honda was an early adopter of using electric start in their bikes, and our 350 here is no exception. The bikes that were produced from the 60s to the early 70s up until about 1973, what we call the unsafety version of these bikes, meaning that if you happen to have the bike in gear and you hit the electric start button, the bike will jump and lunge forward. Uh, after 73, they changed that to having a safety circuit where you had to have the bike in neutral to use the electric starter. We have a different video about that, so make sure you check it out if you have a bike with uh, that particular circuit. But our old 350 here has the more primitive um, circuit that you, know, you could start in gear, but remember, always start your bike in neutral, whether it's with the electric starter or with the Kickstarter. Let's cover the actual uh, logic of the circuit on this 350. Again, it's going to be the same for like CB175, CL175s, uh, 450s from this era. This is actually a pretty simple circuit because there's only a few parts involved. As always, we're going to start with uh, ground on this particular circuit. And our ground starts at the handlebar. In this case, the ground is actually gonna be the metal of the handlebar itself tied into uh, the ground circuit of the bike, which we've talked about in many other videos. And if you haven't watched our, our video on understanding ground circuit, you need to do that. When we depress the start button, we connect the button to ground. So current runs from ground through the start button, out of the start button, through a wire that is yellow with a red stripe and it comes all the way through the bucket, through the harness, back over here to our starter solenoid, which is hiding just behind the battery. Here is that yellow wire with a red stripe. That wire runs into the solenoid, out of the solenoid to a solid black wire, which we know is gonna be 12 volt positive, hooked to the key switch. If you've not watched our video understanding the positive side of the circuit, make sure you check that out from there. Now, the other part of the solenoid that we haven't talked about is connecting the battery to the electric starter. That first part of the circuit, all it does is it triggers the solenoid into action. Because what a solenoid is, is a switch that's triggered by a switch. It's a stepper switch. Uh, you know, the electric starter itself is the one electrical component on the entire bike that uses a lot of battery power, draws a lot of current. And so the reason we have a solenoid is so it's its own big switch, which a lot of current can pass through so it can turn the starter. So what we're doing is we're, the solenoid triggers and it connects the battery directly to the starter. And that's where we have some of these larger wires here. So we have to not only check does the solenoid trigger, but we're also getting current through our larger connections. So uh, when we dive into it and do a diagnostic, it'll make a little bit more sense, but you have to understand that the solenoid is a switch that triggers a switch. So right now we want to test the 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 button here, the start button circuit itself, independent from the rest of the wiring going down to the solenoid. And that is this 
red wire, I'm sorry, a yellow wire with a red stripe on it right here. I'll plug it, you guys can see it better. Let's see, so we got that half of the circuit there, and then I have another part of the circuit on the pigtail down here. Now one of these goes into the handlebar switch. When I depress the button, it connects the switch to ground, and that completes the circuit. The other one runs through the harness all the way back to the starter solenoid, which is connected also to 12 volt positive in this architecture style. So let's identify which one's which first by finding which one has 12 volt positive power going to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my old test light. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my test light to ground. The bucket here, which is our dark green. I'm gonna turn on the key switch. And let's see which one of these actually illuminates when I touch the test light to it because we're completing the circuit. It's not this one. That tells me this one probably goes to the switch. Bet you it's this one right here. That turns on. So that says from this point all the way through the harness, all the way back through the solenoid back to 12 volt positive, I have a good connection. So now this wire is what goes up to my switch. So we're gonna test it to make sure it works. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna remove my test light from there. I'm gonna connect it to this wire here, just like that, cover it up. And as we've talked about in many of our other videos, we talked about the 12 volt positive side of the circuit. I happen to have a black pigtail here with a solid black wire, which means 12 volt positive when the key is on. So I'm gonna take my test light, I'm gonna just tap it into the circuit here. Let me tap it in so it stays put. And make sure my key is on. Key is on. And when I push the button here, I'm gonna connect to ground, which means I should get from ground through the switch, through the wire here, through the test light, back to 12 volt positive. Let's see if our button works. Look at that. On, off, on, off, on, off. So therefore, our button, our button's working just fine. And also we know that our circuit from uh, where the button connects to it in the bird's nest here back to the solenoid is also properly working. Uh, a quick note about the actual uh, starter button switch here. Uh, one is we do have replacement uh, of buttons and springs here because typically this little contact gets dirty and wears out. Uh, this is also the most common place where you have starter problems is that this button is either dirty or something's come unsoldered or uh, unconnected here in this part of the switch. It's not as frequently as it, the actual solenoid as it is the button here. So depending on the bike you have, maybe you have what I call the little button, we have replacement switches for that or replacement buttons for that. All right, so we're done the headlight bucket. We know we have good ground connection up there. We know our switch is working and we know we have a good connection up into our uh, plugging into the starter solenoid right here uh, to this wire. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna unplug our uh, yellow and red wire that comes from the harness into the solenoid like that. So now I have this yellow red wire. It just goes into the solenoid and this is part of the triggering uh, part of the circuit that actually caused the solenoid to, to engage and go into action. And what I'm going to do is we have wire going in, coming out as a 12 volt positive black wire. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is connect to ground, which we know is going to be like anywhere on the frame here. I'm going to just connect to the loader. That'll work. I'm going to test my test light as always. We're good there. Key switch is on. And when I check here, this test light should kick on because that means I have power running through the solenoid and back to 12 volt positive. And sure enough, we have a good connection there. So that means not only do I have 12 volt positive here, but I don't have a broken circuit inside the solenoid. If I tapped into that 12 volt positive black wire here, of course, we're good. And we know that runs all the way back to the positive side of the battery via the key switch. I know it's like right here next to each other, but don't be confused that it runs directly to the battery. It does go all the way back up to the key switch to be controlled, because watch, I'm gonna turn off the key. 
and it turns off. Now we're gonna get into something a little bit more intricate. So I know that I actually have a good circuit here, but I wanna make sure that not only is a solenoid triggering when I hit the start button, but also that I am getting current through the larger terminals that would connect to the starter on the solenoid. So we're gonna unhook a couple of these larger wires here first, and we're gonna use a test byte to verify all of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do as always, is I'm gonna disconnect the negative side of the battery because that is really our master disconnect for everything. And then I'm gonna disconnect a couple, or actually one of these uh, larger positive wires here going to the solenoid. We're looking down at the top of the solenoid here and we have these, the two large terminals. Uh, this terminal connects with a short wire to the, the positive side of the battery. And this other terminal here is what runs down all the way to the electric starter. And when the solenoid is engaged, these two terminals are making contact internally inside the solenoid. Additionally, we have a couple of this, uh, of the red wire, the white stripe. Uh, this is our 12 volt positive power going to the key switch. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna disconnect the wire that connects the solenoid to the battery. I'm sorry, the solenoid to the starter, not the battery. I'm gonna take this one off here. There. Take this wire, take it off, get it out of the way. All right, now that is disconnected. And now I'm going to reconnect my negative terminal on the battery. We're reconnected and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my, my key switch here and I'm going to hit the start button. I'm gonna listen for a click. If we hear a click that says the solenoid is engaging. So let's go ahead and push the start button. You hear that? So that says that the when it clicks, the solenoid is engaging when we hit the start button. So that means we have a good circuit all the way from the start button from ground through the solenoid on that part of the circuit. What we don't know is just because it's clicking is if these two terminals are actually making contact with one another. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have my test light. We know that this side of the terminal is hooked to 12 volt positive. I take my test light. I'm gonna go ahead and just touch my test light to negative here. So we know we have power here and I'm gonna to touch it on that terminal there. And when I hit the button, test light should kick on. Sure enough, it does because power then is transferring between this terminal and that terminal only when the solenoid is engaged. So that says not only do we have circuit, no, power to trigger the solenoid, but the solenoid itself is actually transferring power across the terminals uh, when it's activated. Other than that, we can hook this back up to the starter and let's see if the starter works. Okay, that's hooked back up. Those wires are good. Now let me hook up our, our ground connection again. Okay. I have reconnected the uh, starter to the solenoid. So everything's hooked back up and we're gonna test to see if the starter turns over. Now in this test, if we know the solenoid works, but the starter doesn't turn over, maybe we have a problem either at the wire to the starter or maybe the starter itself has a problem and might need to be rebuilt, but we know the solenoid is good. The key is on, bike is in neutral, and let's hit our start button and see if it cranks over. Circuit works. All right, that concludes uh, diagnosing the starter solenoid or the starter circuit on this particular uh, pre-safety era <laughs> uh, Honda 350. Uh, with that, this is Brendan from Common Motor. 
common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter through our website. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. Make sure you ring the bell for notifications and we'll see you next time.